Well, hello there and welcome to School of the Spirit. Um, it's an amazing time discussing matters of the Spirit that make for our growth and our edification. I believe that God wants us to be intelligent um, when it has to do with the realm of the Spirit, understanding the realm of the Spirit, how to interact with that realm, and some of the things that we will discover in our journeys with God. And so we are trying to bring perspective to these things based on the revelations that God has committed to us. And like I said in the first video of spiritual summons, that um, what we are saying may not be anything new, as it were. We may only be communicating um, a perspective that God has given to us that best suits uh, someone's current journey in the spirit. So you'll be able to label and articulate exactly what's happening to you and exactly what God is doing with you part time. So you're welcome and thanks for tuning in and ensure you subscribe up to the channel because there will be lots and lots of videos um, streaming in on this platform. So with that being said, let's say a short word of prayer and then proceed. Father, I thank you for my viewers and listeners right now. We trust you that you will cause to rest upon us your spirit of wisdom. It will cause our understandings to be enlightened as we journey to explore deeper truths in you, matters concerning the realm of the spirit, give us insight to the glory of your name, in Jesus' name, amen. So today we are going to talk about burdens. Um, in the first episode, we looked at summons, how, what, what it means to be summoned, and then how one can be summoned uh, by the realm of the spirit and some of the signs to watch out for. It's a very exciting video that will really bless you. So you may want to go look at it either by checking the description box below or by watching to the end of this video. And you'll definitely find that video on the screen. So this is, we're looking at burdens today, spiritual burdens, spiritual burdens. And We'll try to practically define it, understand what a spiritual body is all about and how it communicates to us in our journey of walk with the Lord. I want to read two scriptures and then we'll proceed. First of all, I will read Isaiah chapter 13, verses 1. In trying to define spiritual bodies, um, you will discover that we will have to read more often from the book of the prophets because it's a language that is familiar with prophets. Isaiah chapter 13, I'll read verse 1. And then after that, I'm going to read Isaiah chapter 14, verses 28. So let's start with Isaiah chapter 13. First of all, verse 1. It says, The burden against Babylon which Isaiah the son of Amos saw the burden against Babylon, against an entire nation, which Isaiah the son of Amos saw. Now let's go to Isaiah chapter 14, verse 28. It says, This is the burden which came in the year that King Ahaz died. Now, if you look at these two scriptures, it gives you an idea that um, a burden uh, contains messages communicated because in the first scripture it talked about a burden that was against a nation and in the second scripture it spoke about a burden that came at a particular time so here it is talking about referring to a nation obviously it's talking about a message given to a nation uh, from the Lord through his prophet and then in the second scripture it speaks about a time in which a burden is received and it said it was at the year that King Ahaz died. So let's 
go deeply into the root and find out what the word burden means in the Bible. Now, of course, because the Old Testament was written in Hebrew, we'll look up these words in their root Hebrew meaning. The word burden in the Hebrew means maso. It means maso, but it's spelled M-A-S-S-A. It means maso. Maso has two primary meanings. Number one, it means a load or a bearing or tribute or lifting. A load, bearing, tribute or lifting. Tribute as in the tax that is placed or imposed on a nation or a city or an individual. A load that one will bear. A lifting. Number two, it means utterance, oracle of vision. Utterance, oracle of vision. So it's, it's getting more interesting now because it's talking about a message, an utterance, an oracle, or a vision. So this is a spiritually communicated message um, in form of a burden. Of course, like I said, it means to be lifted up, to carry, to be born. So when we look at it, um, looking at these two combined primary meanings, it's talking about a message that is carried or relayed by an individual or a visionary experience communicated to an individual to reveal God's mind about something. That's what the burden is. I'll read two more scriptures or three from the Old Testament um, so we have a full import of this word. Of course, like I said, it's a word used most times by prophets. So we are looking mainly at the Old Testament. In Habakkuk chapter 1 and in verse 1, in Habakkuk chapter 1 and in verse 1, it says, The burden which the prophet Habakkuk saw, the burden which the prophet Habakkuk saw. In the Amplified Translation, it says, The burden or oracle, the thing to be lifted up, which Habakkuk, the prophet, saw. In Zechariah chapter 9, in Zechariah chapter 9 and in verse 1, Zechariah chapter 9 and verse 1, The burden of the word of the Lord against the land of Hadrach and Damascus, its resting place, for the lights of men and all the tribes of Israel are on the Lord, the burden of the word of the Lord. If you go to Zechariah chapter 12, verse 1, it still uses the same expression, the burden of the word of the Lord against Israel. So it means an oracle that is spoken against the people or spoken towards a people, a vision that is born by an individual, a word from God born by an individual, spoken or given utterance to in referring to a particular nation, city or individual. A burden can also be a visionary experience. In Nahum chapter 1 and in verse 1, in Nahum chapter 1 verse 1, it says the burden against Nineveh the burden against Nineveh, the book of the vision of Nahum the Elkoshite. So here in Nahum was a prophet who had a vision of the Lord uh, and in this vision was contained messages to Nineveh, a city that was about to come under divine judgment. Well, let's go to the New Testament where we may find um, an extensive a definition of this word in Acts chapter 17 and in verse 16 in Acts chapter 17 and in verse 16 the Bible says when Paul was in Athens um, he saw that the city of Athens was given to idolatry now while Paul waited for them at Athens his spirit was provoked within him when he saw that the city was given over to idols so Paul had a burden because the city was given over to idols. Everywhere there was an altar to an idol, to a god somewhere. And there was a burden in Paul to witness to these people about salvation. 
and the one and only true living God. In Acts chapter 20, Paul was addressing the, the church of Ephesus before he departed from them. And in verse 22, here's what Paul said, And see now, I go bound in the Spirit to Jerusalem, not knowing the things that will happen to me there. I go bound by the Spirit to Jerusalem, not knowing the things that will happen to me there. So obviously, Paul was bounded in spirit. You know, what he means is, you, you will just know, you have a knowing that certain things are about to happen, either to you or with you or through you, and you don't really understand the full meaning or the full scope, the full import of why or what these things are. But you just have this knowing that certain things are about to happen and you are compelled to play in accordance with the rules. So these are more elaborate and extensive meanings of the word burdens. I'll also want to define the difference between a burden and a weight so we can understand because you can sense a burden in the spirit or a burden of the spirit and you can also experience it of the spirit. So before we go to define spiritual burdens, it will be good that we clarify um, the difference between both because these are two spiritual phenomena, a burden or a weight. Now, a weight is actually um, a negative impulse that we will experience um, or that Satan places on people. That's what a weight really is. A weight can be in the form of an anxieties or worries, depressions. It, it sort of suppresses your spirit. That's what a weight really is. When a weight comes on you, it makes your spirit heavy. Um, you recall in Isaiah chapter 61, in verse 3, I believe, where he speaks about uh, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, the spirit of heaviness, the spirit of heaviness. When the weight is placed upon you by the devil, you experience heaviness in your spirit. But in a burden, uh, you are light in your spirit for a burden to rest upon you. All right, and a burden is placed upon us by the Spirit of God um, as a means by which God communicates His heart to us. So this is a very simple difference between uh, spiritual burdens or spiritual weights. Spiritual burdens. You know, Charles Spurgeon, one of the great preachers of the faith um, in the 20th century, has this to say. He said, when God places a burden upon you, he places his arms underneath you. When God places a burden upon you, he places his arms underneath you. So God carries you when a burden is placed on you. He carries you in the spirit. You become light to receive the impulses of the heart of God. When a burden comes upon you, you recall in Ezekiel 37 verse 1, Ezekiel said that the hand of God was upon me and carried me in the spirit of the Lord. The hand of God was upon me. I was a burden. And I was carried in the spirit of the Lord. So when God places a burden on you, he's getting ready to lift you. He's getting ready to carry you so he can communicate messages to you. Now let's define what a burden is practically. I'll give you three definitions. Number one, spiritual burdens is a process of being overwhelmed with what borders God. It's a process of being overwhelmed with what borders God. I'm trying to define spiritual burdens now. It's the process of being overwhelmed with what borders God. Number two, it is hearing, seeing, and touching God's heart over a matter. Hearing, seeing, and touching God's heart over a matter. When you can hear what is in the heart of God concerning a thing, when you can see, you are given visionary experiences 
or you can literally touch. You know, that's how it is. It, it, you, like you can really touch the extent of this burden in the heart of God. You begin to feel it as it is in God's heart. That's one of the definitions of spiritual burdens. Hearing, seeing, and touching God's heart over in matter. Number three, it is God's practical way of making known His will to us in order to secure our maximum cooperation. God's practical way of making known His will to us in order to secure our maximum cooperation. In order to secure our maximum cooperation. Spiritual burdens, when deployed over us, will make known God's will to us in order that we respond, we cooperate with God to bring to pass this will. That's why He places that burden on you. You are compelled to partner with God to execute or to bring to pass the purpose for this burden. Having said that, um, we'll, I would talk about what spiritual burdens deploy men to. Three things that spiritual burdens would deploy men to. When a spiritual burden comes on a man, there are three basic things that that man will be deployed to do. Number one, to walk for God. When a spiritual burden is on you, you are deployed to walk for God. You are deployed to walk. Remember in John chapter 9 verse 4, Jesus said, I will, I must walk the walk of him who sent me while it is day. And he performed the miracle on the blind man. So when the spiritual burden comes on you, you are deployed as a man into the walk or the service of God. Number two, you are deployed into the place of prayer and intercession. It deploys a man to pray or to intercede. Paul spoke about Epaphras, one of the saints in Colossians chapter 4, verse 12, who labored in prayers consistently over the church in Colossae. Fervently, fervently. It's almost as if God saddles you with a responsibility of having spiritual oversight or, or of, of having a burden to constantly intercede or to pray over a cause or over a people. So spiritual burdens would deploy us to prayer and intercession. Remember in Ephesians 6.18, it says we should pray always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and we should watch with perseverance unto the saints watching over the saints with perseverance, praying and persevering in intercession for God's people. And then finally, you are deployed to preach or teach the truth. A burden can come on a man, and that man is saddled with responsibility to preach and teach a particular truth allocated to him by the Lord Jesus. By the Lord Jesus. So uh, these, these are three major things that a spiritual body can deploy you into. Now, what do you do when you sense a burden in your spirit? And I think this is where we we'll wrap it up. What do you do when you sense a burden in your spirit? Number one, pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit to perceive it better. When you sense a spiritual burden in your spirit, pray exercise yourself by praying in the spirit so you can perceive it better you are already sensing it you're touching it but you need to lay hold on it and so when you begin to pray in the spirit and exercise your spirit your spiritual senses will open up to be able to both see hear understand touch and feel this body very well to identify to articulate exactly what it is you know, if you see something you don't understand, all you need to do is keep looking at it. So when the spiritual body comes on you, pray, you pray in the spirit and activate your spiritual senses to be able to perceive it better for understanding. Number two, study to find out what the burden is about. When you sense a burden in your spirit, study to find out. When you have prayed through in the spirit, 
and you access it, begin to study what you have accessed to find out what the burden is. That study can be simply meditating on what you have discovered, meditating on it, observing it very well. Sometimes some burdens can be similar, all right? You can have a burden rest upon you now that is similar to a spiritual burden that had come upon you in the near past. So you can study and observe it, or perhaps it may be different to find out what it is. And of course, you need the help of the Holy Spirit in this. Remember that the, the Holy Spirit is the teacher, the teacher of all teachers. Jesus said in John 14 that when he comes, he will teach us all things and bring to our remembrance all that he has taught us. So it is the Spirit of God who will help you practically observe, study, to find out exactly what this burden is about because I believe that every spiritual body contains a message from God that is meant to um, um, secure your maximum cooperation for its fulfillment. So you have to study to find out what it's all about. That's the reason why if you read Habakkuk chapter 2, the prophet said, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon my tower and watch to see what he will say to me. I'll watch to see. He began to perceive the burdens of God in his heart. And so he took a posture to allow him to observe, to see or to hear further what God would say. And then as from verse 2 of that chapter 2, continually God began to speak to him and articulate exactly the burden that he had. You know, Peter had a visionary experience. A spiritual burden was placed on him to, to witness to the Gentiles in Acts chapter 10. But he didn't understand the vision. So the Bible says why he kept pondering about it, while he was trying to study to find out what it meant. In his spirit, the Holy Ghost spoke to him and gave him clarity. Three men are downstairs waiting for you. And he had a vision three times. And now the Holy Spirit says three men are downstairs waiting for you. He says go with them. And that was how the door of the gospel was opened to the Gentiles. So you study by the help of the Holy Spirit to find out what the burden is number three walk according to the wisdom and knowledge supplied by the spirits in fulfilling that body walk according to the wisdom and knowledge supplied by the spirit in fulfilling that body as you study or meditate through a burden the spirit of god will begin to inspire you it gives you knowledge about it and then he gives you wisdom by which you can uh, practically demonstrate what you have known concerning that body. If, for instance, the body is meant to, uh, to be deployed in the area of preaching or teaching a particular truth, it is the wisdom that you receive from the Holy Spirit that will help you walk, that will aid you to walk in keeping with what you have received in that body because it must be fulfilled. Some other times it could be prayer and intercession. The body could be intercede over a nation, intercede over a community, over a territory. And then you get yourself into the place of intercession and begin to pray until the body is fulfilled. How would you know that the body is fulfilled? Very simple. When it is lifted from off your spirit, you will get to a point if it was a burden to walk or to pray and intercede or to teach or preach, you will know that you have fulfilled your path when the burden is lifted. You will feel that, 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 that mass on your spirit lifted. Sometimes in the place of intercession, God could speak to you and ask you to pray and intercede for an individual or to pray and intercede for a nation or a people. And as you keep doing that, after a while, Sometimes as you do that, the burden will increase. Then a time will come where you begin to feel yourself becoming light again. The burden is lifted. That's how you know that that burden has been fulfilled. You have successfully executed your part, your quota in God's plan that was you know, expressed through that burden. Um, that's how much we can take for now on spiritual burdens. I know it's not so much, 
but I, I believe that it has brought clarity and understandings. And I'd like you to deploy these principles and everything you've learned here uh, into the aspects of your life where you experience spiritual burdens. And let's trust God that the next time a spiritual burden comes on you, you have the wisdom and intelligence to handle it so that the will of God can be fulfilled and can find expression through you. Remember, Jesus said, I must walk the walk of him that sent me while it is day. In John chapter 4, I believe in verse 33, he said, My will is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish it. That let the spiritual burden of the Lord drive you into the fulfillment of his divine purpose for your life. In Jesus' name. Father, I pray for my viewers right now. I pray, Lord, that everyone that you have placed a burden on, give them the understanding, the intelligence, the wisdom to carry out that burden until it is fulfilled. Help them to study and to understand what you are communicating to them at time. And then for those who may not have any burden, Lord, place one on them tonight. Place one on them today. Give them visionary experiences that will drive them and compel them to the place of prayer that will prepare and saddle them with the responsibility of work, of kingdom advancement in the name of Jesus. And let these burdens help them journey to discover deeper dimensions in your spirit. Let your name be glorified. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for tuning in. God bless you and see you on the next episode.